Hey guys, today's video will be a little bit different because this won't be a tutorial or anything like that but instead I've collected some thoughts, some pros and cons that will help you decide whether you want to use IP Fire in 2021 or actually even 2022 or not. So if you're interested keep on watching. But first if you're new to the channel my name is Lasso Merzal and this channel deals with home automation, home networking and sometimes with related stuff like the electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. Okay, first of all, here's the thing. So this video was never meant to be as a comparison video. I won't compare IP Fire against uh, other popular distributions like PFSense or OpenVRT or OpenSense or Untangle or whatnot, because IP Fire is kind of special. Uh, I will just uh, collect a few things, pros and cons, as a list. So let's get started. The first item is maturity. So IP Fire is quite a mature firewall distribution. Uh, it's a software that has been in the development, has been developed for quite a few years now. And because of that, it doesn't contain a lot of bugs and it's uh, still getting fixes up to this very day. So those are mostly security fixes and uh, sometimes smaller new features, but nothing ground shaking. So anyway, the fact that there's a trusty old firewall that will keep your system uh, secure, your network secure, is definitely a pro. On the other hand, with the maturity of the software comes a price. So when you check the UI on a mobile device or on a small screen, I don't know, tablet or something like that, you will notice that uh, while it's very dated, it's not responsive, not mobile friendly at all. And well, yeah, it's kind of old school and uh, sometimes tricky to manipulate or navigate. So that's the par price for that, for the maturity. Also, as far as I'm aware, there's no major UI revamp is planned, so you have to live with that. That's a con, right? Anyway, uh, next point is uh, hardware compatibility. So, the fun thing is that uh, IP Fire runs on pretty much everything where a small Linux distribution can run. That's like potato grade hardware, so even all the Raspberry Pi or some old PC, let's assume that you have some spare parts, you can just slap together a small um, low power PC from those or actually like a, a refurbished old office workstation with a small power supply and an integrated VGA and whatnot and you can use it as a server. Mine is running on a 10 year old 2 core EMD machine that was uh, media center back on the back in the days that was way before uh, Raspberry Pi's got powerful enough to play 4k video and stuff like that it's running happily and uh, actually it's running together with other virtual machines because yeah IP fire is running in a happily in a virtual machine as well so whatever you have at hand it's pretty much possible that you will be able to use it to run IP fire so that is a pro also another pro that uh, IP Fire doesn't seem to be particularly picky about network interfaces. So my experience is, although I have to admit that I haven't tried exotic network cards or whatnot, but uh, whatever I throw at it, it will just work, be it a Realtek or an, an Intel or whatever, some totally random uh, network chip. Another thing that I mentioned uh, is that uh, it's getting updated. So it, it, it's, there are updates all the time. Actually, it's one of the uh, major thing about this uh, distribution is that uh, it keeps getting updated and uh, all the fixes, all the new security vulnerability, vulnerabilities are quickly fixed. And that is a good thing. And uh, the whole patching, update, uh, whatever process is uh, quite a breeze. So you just click update and its own package manager installs what, uh, whatever packages it requires and then restarts and you're done. 
This easy to use package manager once again however comes with a price. So it's a totally unique package manager. It's called Packfire and it's not compatible with other Linux package managers like Debian's or Red Hat's or Ubuntu's or whatever. So it is just a separate thing uh, with its own file format, its own uh, rep repository and uh, once again it's pretty closed down. You cannot add custom repositories, you cannot uh, install uh, custom packages. All the packages are released and signed off by the creators of IP Fire. And that is because they are a small team and they want to reduce uh, the cost, the support of, uh, well, supporting custom packages. So it is somewhat understandable. Just think about the situation that uh, you are a software developer and you open up, open, open your software up for add-ons and then a million different people starts working on million different add-ons and then tens of millions of users uh, face problems with those add-ons so they just start hammering your so on your support forum or discord server or whatnot to ask for help or they just start opening github issues and you will soon be overwhelmed and uh, sadly in such a case most of the problems are not even related to your software but it is caused by one of those add-ons so yeah that could be problematic and uh, even it is a bad situation for the end user it is understandable from the developer's point of view obviously because of this i consider the closed down package manager a con actually a strong one now on to the next point sadly this one will be also something like a con once again so, IP Fire uh, has a short documentation and a much smaller user base and than um, your typical open source software. So, when it comes to finding tutorials, finding help, getting to know the community and, and find people with similar problems like you are facing or just uh, getting help in general when it comes to, for example, an exotic firewall rule, then, well, uh, you will face a hard time and you will probably end up on your own. Believe me, it happened to me. So it's, well, for me, this is the strongest con, I think, when it comes to choosing whether I want to use or not use IP Fire. Finally, also, there's one thing that is bad news, but luckily not for everyone, but for a guy like me, it definitely is. So I like integrating stuff. I have Home Assistant as my primary dashboard and I integrated my smart vacuum, my phones, my whatever you name it in my smart home and I just I really like to take, take a single glimpse on the dashboard and know about statuses. And this includes uh, software that is running on my network so I can just easily see uh, problems, alerts or whatnot. Sadly there's no such integration for uh, IP Fire. And I'm not talking about Home Assistant integration. I'm talking about any integration because, well, there's no REST API, no way to connect an MQTT broker or, or webhooks or whatever. So it just sits, it, uh, sits there on its own. And well, that's it. If you want to know something about how your firewall is functioning, is there an update or something is wrong with the firewall, then you will have to visit its UI and check its logs. So for me, that is once again a really, really sad one. A con, definitely. Now that I think of it, I think I just listed more cons than pros. So the question arises, why do I still use IP Fire? And to be honest, that's a legit question. But uh, surprisingly, the answer is quite simple because it just works. I installed it like a year ago or something like that. Before that, I used PFSense, but uh, for whatever reasons, I switched off from PFSense and uh, I bumped into IP Fire. I found it friendly, easy to use and perfectly fit my needs. So I started using it. And uh, it's been good to me for, I mean, since then. Uh, it's getting patches, 
it uh, fulfills all my requirements, it does what it needs to, it's running happily in a VM on my Proxmox host, virtually eating no resources, so why not? On the other hand, I don't think uh, IP Fire is the final destination for me. I especially suffer from the lack of uh, integration with other systems. Now that I'm totally into Home Assistant, I really want to at least have a statistics board or something like that about the firewall, about the network. So I will probably try something else in the future. But then again, IP Fire is just a stable go to solution if I need a firewall without too much hassle, without too much resources or investments. So that's it from my point of view. Okay, with that, I think it's time to close this video and I decided to close it with a question. So what firewall do you use? What is your story? What is your experience? Uh, if you don't mind, please use the comments and uh, share it with me and with the rest of the community. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. I hope I shed some lights on the weaknesses and strengths of uh, IP Fire if you don't know it yet. And uh, if you're not, subs not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing. I try my best to upload new videos every week. Other than that, I hope to see you next time, next week, with another video. Bye.